Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 278 on Now You Know. Brought to you by our amazing Patreon patrons. Help support bringing you independent news every week by heading over to patreon.com slash now you know. And there you'll find some really cool perks, including Patreon bonus story. It's only a buck a month. And this episode of Tesla Time News is brought to you by Endel, an app that creates personalized soundscapes to help you focus, relax, and sleep. Sound can calm your mind to create feelings of comfort and safety or soothe you into a deep sleep. Endel takes everything we know about sound and combines it with technology, adapting in real time to personal inputs like location, weather, and heart rate. So how does this work? Is this what we were listening to today while we were you know, like writing the news? Yeah, so I had it on, and one of the things it helps me do is focus. You know how when you listen to music and then you just start like singing along and you're listening to the lyrics and then you're just like, what am I doing? Or you're like, I don't like this song. And right. you're like, I want to find a song that I do like. And then exactly. you're like, oh, I was supposed to do something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this just like, I don't know the science. There's a whole white paper on it um but there's a lot of science behind it and then the other part where i use it is uh going to bed i mm. uh, just put it on i set it for like 20 minutes kind of helps me relax um, yeah. which is one of those things it's kind of hard to wind down sometimes you're just like full of thoughts and this just helps you to just kind of you know relax your head mm. it's pretty cool if you're interested you can check out the link in the description where the first 100 people will get a one-week trial for free and thank you for your support and we're brought to you by bigbattery.com no matter what you need to power big battery can provide you with the latest battery tech at the best price per kilowatt hour guaranteed their batteries are easily installed require zero maintenance and they're made right here in the u.s pick up yours today at bigbattery.com and use the code now you know for five percent off at checkout so Tesla just released their production and delivery numbers for Q4, and it looks like they had a great quarter and a great year. Yeah, can you say record quarter? Record quarter. Over 305,000 cars produced, over 308,000 delivered in Q4, over 936,000 cars delivered in 2021. And here's the breakdown. Now, I think just looking at the numbers alone doesn't mean that much. So let's go over to Hypercharts. Our favorite charts are at hypercharts.co. And see the numbers in perspective. And as Elon said, great work by Tesla team worldwide. Worldwide. And this is why. I mean, look at this chart. And then let's overlay my little fun arrow on top of it, right? Because this is looking like an exponential S-curve. Model Y added to the mix and all without Berlin or Texas online yet. I mean, come on. 2022 is going to be a great year for Tesla. Exactly. And I want to give a shout out to all of you out there who help Tesla. And you do this pretty much every quarter. This is uh, Fred and his son, Archer. They're out in California helping end of quarter deliveries out there, you know, pulling tape off the cars, cleaning things up, putting on the aero covers. Like, thank you for all this work that the Tesla community does to make this possible. But did you hear that Tesla has recalled half a million cars over safety issues? Must be a battery problem. They're going to catch on fire or something like that. <sighs> Relax. It's not the battery. Then it must be the full self-driving system. Oh my gosh. The car is going to be smashing no. into bricks. And no, it's listen not. Listen to me, people. You got to tell them Tesla is it's people. Silent Green is people. What are you talking about? It's just the front latches and the backup cameras. Huh? But I thought if you actually read the two three page reports that cover these two recalls, you can very quickly pick out what they're about and how serious they are. What, there's reports. Yeah. Let's look at the bigger of the two recalls here. It says three hundred and fifty six thousand three hundred and nine Model 3s affected. <gasps> now, well, right here at the top of the first page in plain English under description of defect. The Model 3 trunk harness is equipped with a solid core coaxial cable that provides the rear view camera feed for visibility on the center display. Over time, repeated opening and closing of the trunk lid may cause excessive wear to the coaxial cable. If the wear causes the core of the coaxial cable to separate, the rear view camera feed is not visible on the center display. There. Now we know what that one is. Okay, so what could happen? Well, let's read the description of the safety risk. Unavailability of the rear view camera display may affect the driver's rear view and increase the risk of a collision. If there is a loss of rear view camera display, the driver can continue to operate the vehicle by performing a shoulder check and using their mirrors when backing. Just like in the old days. So it's not exactly the safety issue that people are making it out to be. No. 
Because, I mean, what is NHTSA gonna like put out a safety bulletin? All cars made between the years 1885 and 2007 have a serious safety flaw. These vehicles were not manufactured with backup cameras installed. All drivers using these vehicles should use caution and continue to use the shiny metal things or their heads to look backwards when appropriate. The shiny metal things. Oh, meaning the mirrors. Yeah. Okay, so the backup camera, basically the cable gets destroyed on some cars and you can't by the way it. they figured that out and in 2021 they stopped doing it that way okay but 300,000 cars i mean how are they going to fix that okay well let's scroll down to page three of three honestly this isn't hard uh description of remedy program tesla service will inspect the trunk harness on affected vehicles for wear if wear is determined to be within specifications for the coaxial cable tesla service will equip the harness with a guide protector to ensure a sufficient radius when the harness holds in a closed trunk state and prevent further wear if wear is determined to be beyond the specifications for the coaxial cable, Tesla service will install a new harness and guide protector. Customers who paid to replace or service the trunk harness for this condition prior to the recall notification may be eligible for reimbursement per Tesla's general recall reimbursement plan. And Tesla estimates that this affects an estimated 1% of Model 3 owners, which is about 3,500 owners of those 350,000 cars. But what about the rest of the nearly <laughs> half a million? Same form, different car. Again, right there on the first page, description of the non-compliance. The secondary front latch actuates into position at the back of the front striker. On some Model S vehicles, the latch assembly may be aligned too far rearward. While this alignment does not impact latching of the primary latch with the front striker, it may prevent latching of the secondary latch. And tilt your eyeballs down just a little further. Description of the safety risk. If the primary latch is inadvertently released and the secondary latch is not engaged, the frunk may open without warning and obstruct the driver's visibility, increasing the risk of a crash. Except that you can't release the primary latch while you're driving. And as they say in the report, identification of any warning that can occur. If the primary latch is inadvertently released, the driver will receive an alert on the user interface. Okay, so the only time that this could be an issue is if you accidentally tap the screen to open the frunk in park and then put it in drive and then drove off and you ignored the warning that says, and you're like, what? Your frunk is open. And so you would probably stop and close it before you peeled out of there. Or if the primary latch failed, which is also unlikely. But the news doesn't stop there, Zach. News reports coming in from China. Over 200,000 Teslas being recalled for collision risk. Right, because they're the same cars with the same mild safety defect and Tesla will be fixing it in basically the same way as in the US. By the way, like I said, all 2021 Teslas have a differently designed trunk harness and this solves the problem. But this is like almost anything. If you ignore the media hype, go straight to the source and apply some basic critical thinking skills, you're gonna know almost exactly what's going on. Uh, yeah, but this NHTSA report thing, this three-page document, is so much less exciting than these news headlines. And that's because this is a completely boring story. The only way to make this exciting is to withhold the truth from you and only feed you the bits that sound exciting on their own. Nearly half a million. Although the real number is more like 20,000. Tesla's recalled for pretty minor or otherwise unlikely safety issues. So seriously, that's it? Yep. But I can almost bet that someone in your life thought they'd do you do a favor, favor and send you this insightful, insightful article, article because they thought it was important. important. Why? Because they don't like that you tell them about this Tesla stuff and they don't want to be forced to reconsider their position. So they thought this article would make you go away and shut up about this Tesla stuff. They're encountering cognitive dissonance, and this story was a perfect narrative for them to show Tesla bad, see? But that's what we do on this show. We get to the heart of the truth and show it to you. And that's also why we have a clips channel. So when your coworker or great aunt Selma sends you this FUD, you can send a clip where we explain it right back. So two big changes for Tesla Model 3 and Ys that we knew were coming, but now are confirmed to be for realsies. Yeah, we reported a few weeks ago how leaked documents from Europe showed a bunch of changes coming to the Model 3 and Y in Europe. But now we get proof that the new infotainment computer with the AMD Ryzen chip are being produced and delivered in North America. And the new 12 volt lithium battery in the Model 3 and Y is here also. I'm excited for the faster infotainment computer. I can't wait to see it benchmarked against the existing computer. I mean, we saw that video of how much faster apps boot up. True. And I mean, that was in China. There might be some differences between cars here and in China. Um, so I, I'm excited to see those benchmarked against each other. But I also want to see how the apps work in action, not just load times. I want to see lag, you know, smoothness, frame rate. 
Mm -hmm. and uh you know stuff like that and the new 12 volt battery i mean i really want to learn how well it does in the cold how long it lasts uh how much the replacement costs because let's be honest it's about time yeah lead acid batteries are heavy they're expensive and they're awful mm -hmm. they, and they, they don't belong in an electric car they you don't need that many cold cranking amps because there's nothing to crank and I don't know if you've bought a lead acid battery lately, but uh, <laughs> the price so is just expensive. insane. Yeah. And speaking of under the hood, a Model Y body that seems to be made for the new structural body pack was spotted at Giga Texas by drone pilot Joe Tegmeyer. So if we take these two photos, Joe's photo of the Model Y body and this photo from the open house at Giga Berlin showing the structural battery pack with the seat mounts, you can imagine how they will go together to form the structure of the Model Y. And thank you again to Joe and the Quad Squad in Austin for their constant hard work in sharing videos of Giga Texas being built. Go subscribe to Joe's channel because that's what makes it possible for them to keep doing this. And this structural battery pack, like this is, again, one of those game changers that most people will miss, mainly because most financial analysts don't understand it. Um, and the mass media, of course, doesn't report on it. I mean, it may seem a bit dry. Oh, I don't care for engineering. Is that a kitten stuck in a flower pot? Now that's newsworthy. Right, but being able to eliminate hundreds of individual parts, dozens of workstations, robots, workers, processes, this means improved speed, quality, and cost. And again, that's so boring for most people, but that's going to make a huge difference in margins. And you're not going to hear about it anywhere else. So Elon was on the Lex Friedman podcast for the third time. Definitely worth a watch. So many cool different topics discussed. Now, I want to talk about what Elon said about Tesla bot. Our, our initial focus is just to make it useful. I'm confident we'll get it done. I'm not sure what the exact time frame is, but uh, like we'll probably have, I don't know, a decent prototype towards the end of next year or something like that. A decent prototype by the end of 2022. Yeah, Lex said he thought Tesla bot could make a good companion like, you know, C-3PO and R2-D2. And Elon said he could see how you could map personality imperfections or what the Japanese call wabi-sabi. The subtle imperfections are what make something special. You could map these personality imperfections onto Tesla bot to make them more endearing to their owners or friends. Now, he wasn't sure the right word to call them. And I think it's going to be a big issue for us humans going forward. I mean, kind of like with pets today, right? Am I a dog's owner? Am I a dog's friend? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. It's a good question. What are we going to call these humanoid robots once they start living with us, caring for us uh, and being our friends? Yeah. So nice to have Elon in a comfortable environment on Lex Friedman podcast where he's respected, he's relaxed. And he's using a good microphone. Mm -hmm. Same mic, by the way, uh, because when you can just hear him uh, without having to just like go through, you know, normally he's on stage and he's like answering dumb questions mm -hmm. and he's having to repeat himself here. He's with someone he's been talking to before. And so you get really just awesome conversations. Yeah. yeah, I really recommend you go check it out. And speaking of liking something, if you like what we're doing, please hit that like button. It really helps us out. So according to financial analyst Dan Ives from Wedbush, Tesla could double their auto production this year. He wrote in a note to clients last week, we believe by the end of 2022, Tesla will have the capacity for overall about 2 million units annually from roughly 1 million today. Ives is doing the math. If Giga Texas and Giga Berlin come online as expected and can ramp in a reasonable amount of time, then Tesla will be able to double its production numbers in one year. Optimistically, if things go fantastically, they could theoretically do even better, especially with Giga Shanghai continuing to increase output. Ives reiterated his price target of $1,400 for Tesla stock and his bullish case for $1,800. Now, disclaimer, Jesse and I are long on Tesla stock. We are not financial advisors. This is not financial advice. Do your own research before investing. Important to note that Dan Ives ranks number 22 out of 7,756 analysts on tip ranks. And he's been following Tesla for years. Yeah, no, it really is exciting. I think 2022 is going to be an awesome year for Tesla. Tesla Time News is sponsored by Cybertruck Owners Club. There you'll find a crowdsource reservation tracker that you can update and find your place in the line. Check out their website for Cybertruck news, discussions, and community for Cybertruck enthusiasts and future owners. Some Ford Lightning reservation holders are reporting that their local Ford dealers are hiking up prices for the upcoming Lightning F-150. One case reportedly went as high as $30,000 over sticker price, although there have been many different dealers of different brands who've been hiking the prices of soon-to-be-released EVs to varying levels. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this, but here to weigh in, local car dealer, Vinny Bambuzzolini. Hey there, folks, it's Vinny Bambuzzolini here, your trusted automotive advisor. And boy, do I have a deal for you today. 
As you may or may not know, Combustra has just announced a new electro vehicle, the Fuse Truck. And we are very excited to be offering you this new exciting vehicle to our very excited customers. Aren't we, Vito? Uh, I don't know. Sure. Hey, Vito, according to this stupid Combustra contract, you're going to have to act excited, okay? Uh, that's right. Combustra has made sure that we're excited by forcing us to install our very first charging station. But folks, we got a little problem. I can only get my hands on a small number of these exciting fuse trucks. So, to sweeten the deal, for me, I'm offering you the chance to pick up one of the first of these exciting new vehicles for the lowly markup of $30,000. Whoa, Vinny, I mean, isn't that a little, uh, exploitative? Vito? I'm gonna teach you a little lesson here in economics. Here we go, supply and demand. I know, but $30,000? Hey, but that's fine. If they don't get that kind of money, they can wait for the next round. And it'll only cost them up to uh, $10,000. Well, Vinny, I thought the dealership model was supposed to um, provide customer protection. Hey, it's not my fault these people don't seem to understand what protection is. And I mean, hey, at least you could go down to uh, Mr. Scusaretti's and see what he's got to offer. I mean, I doubt if Mr. Tesla would give you such an offer. But I mean, Vinny, the truck sticker price is like $53,000. How can you justify such a mock-up? Listen, Vito, if I wanted such a dumb lesson in business, I'd go talk to my wife. Do you know what I mean? No, this is going straight to my yacht fund. I'm not stupid, Vito. Even the fuse is gonna need less maintenance than a good old Combustor 9000. So, when the time comes, I'm gonna pass this failing business to one of my stupid nephews, like you. Wow. R really, Vinny? I'm touched. Hey, hey, no crying or you're gonna shock yourself with that cable. What? Wait, so what's going on? Yeah. Dealers all over the country are hiking prices well above market prices just because they can. Now, it's partly due to reduced supply because of chip shortages. I mean, even gas cars and trucks are seeing markups, but the new EVs are seeing the worst of it. Truly, ridiculously increased markups. I mean, so much for dealers being good for consumers. Like, this is the <laughs> argument we've been hearing for years yes. about why we have to keep Tesla out right. because dealers are great. Right. And it's completely arbitrary. You can go to one dealer, they'll hike it up ten, twenty thousand $20,000. You go to another dealer, they won't. With Tesla, it's a set price. You know exactly what it is. Right. And, it, you know, you might be saying, Zach and Jesse, but it's great. You go to a different dealer. If this disincentivizes manufacturers, right? Because if the market can truly bear an extra 60% margin on an EV, then the manufacturers could be seeing that cost. And I'm, I know it's weird to say, I think Ford should be seeing that money directly. And they mm. could be taking that money, investing it back into their production of new EVs. Um, and the dealer would still make their healthy cut of that. And you know, the other bad thing about this is that when you pay 30,000 more for your F-150 and then you tell your friends and they're like, yeah, man, EVs are so expensive. Right. And it's like, no, they're not. It's just you got gouged. Yeah, it's complete price gouging. I, I really thought that the you know dealers associations would you know have some guidelines for this sort of thing. <laughs> you said that with uh, a straight face. Almost did. Wow. Now speaking of trucks, I think a big news story that kind of got overlooked a couple weeks ago. I mean, I know we touched on it in the news, but it was that Motor Trend named the Rivian R1T pickup truck of the year. They said it was, quote, the most remarkable pickup truck we've ever driven. Yeah, cool. I mean, it's great that they, you know, got to drive one. Um, and I don't think Motor Trend even put down a reservation. Funny how that works out. <laughs> you don't seem that annoyed. I mean, you of all people should be annoyed for getting credit for a truck that they haven't delivered to most day one reservation holders yet. No, I mean, I know, and I am. But, I mean, this is a startup electric vehicle company making their first model. OK, and Motor Trend awards them the Motor Trend Truck of the Year. I mean, think about that for a second. Other automakers like GM, Ford and Chevy, they've been making pickups for decades. And along comes a startup and wins hands down. This is a great sign for what is about to come when Cybertruck, the Ford Lightning and others enter the market. I mean, I see what you're saying. I just don't think that we should be giving them credit. I, I don't know. We don't know. And I mean, how long did Motor Trend have the truck for? Did they have did they, you know, try and do long distance driving with it? 
there's so many other unanswered questions that I don't think that, you know, Motor Trend really answered and they don't really have the any means to know the answers. No, to. that's a good point. But I like this quote from Motor Trend. They said the quality of design, engineering, materials and technology on offer are as good as or better than any other high buck pickup truck you can buy today, not to mention the driving experience and the breadth of capability. The 2022 Rivian R1T shows the world a new way to build a pickup and new ways to think about truck design, engineering and use case. And it gives up almost nothing in capability in the process. It shows us pickups can be for people who never wanted one. It shows us that they can be more than leather lined tools, that commercial applications are not the exclusive starting point in envisioning a new truck. Most important, it shows us that they can be electric vehicles and be better for it. OK, I mean, I really like Motor Trend's take here. It's like, yeah, trucks, um, which have been the, this diesel-y, grizzly kind of thing. They can be electric. And and I, I, I guess I have to applaud Motor Trend for picking an electric pickup truck. I think they could have done this with pretty much any of them and just been like, it's a pickup truck. It's electric. You can do that. I think that people need to hear that. I think that when the SUV came out, um, it was like, why haven't we thought of this before? Mm -hmm. Right. I think the pickup truck is actually going to reinvent itself going electric because mm. I think there's a lot of people who would like a pickup truck, but don't want the smelly part mm. and don't want the loud part. If it's quiet and sexy like this, then they're like, great, I need something where I can throw stuff in the back. And yes, I'm a bit salty, Rivian. I mean, where's my pickup truck? I was a day one reservation holder and I'm just getting these update emails saying that customers who ordered the max pack or the 400 mile pack are going to have to wait until 2023. I mean, luckily, I did not order the largest pack. But hey, they're prioritizing your truck, Zach. I mean, they're listening to you. I mean, I, of course, 20% of their customers who order the max pack are getting <laughs> whoops. <laughs> and I mean, so far, Rivian says that they have 71,000 pre-orders for the R1T and the R1S. And again, put that in perspective to the Cybertruck with over 1.3 million. And uh, it shows you the difference. But mm -hmm. this is good news for all electric vehicles. Yep. All right. So with the Tesla over the air software 10.8 holiday update came a big UI refresh or user interface and many people liked it and many people did not. Tesla Raj says ability to remove sources needs to return. I only choose to use Spotify. However, with version 11 slacker gets used when using voice command. I prefer safety of using voice command, but want to choose my sources. Elon, can we fix this? Now, Elon did say many UI improvements coming. And just a little tip um, for Tesla Raj or anyone listening, uh, you can say, you know, listen to Back in Black on Spotify and it will play from Spotify. But now, it is annoying to do that. Now, I think it's safe to say that most of us have experienced this with operating systems and programs that we use. There's this fine line that software designers have to walk between having their users comfortable with how to use the software and not updating just to keep the experienced users happy with the familiarity. Many new Tesla owners, I don't think, realized that Tesla does this every now and then. They completely refresh the UI. And here's the problem. Tesla communication or lack thereof, I should say. I think if Tesla had communicated what was coming and demonstrated how to use their new software, there is a segment of the user population who would have really appreciated it. That said, there is another large group, probably you, that will dive right in and figure out how the update works for themselves. So it's true, there are many cool improvements to what Teslas can now do with 10.8, but there are things people got used to, like the little swipe menu on the lower left that are now gone. And for many people, going out to your car and finding that you don't understand how it works anymore is, well, unsettling. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Tesla should set up a support phone line. Hello, Tesla 10.8 emotional support line. I know, I know. It's hard to turn on the wipers now. You can hit the button on the end of the left stock and that will open it up for you. Did that help? I'm so sorry you're missing the old UI. Just remember, life is change. Embrace the change. Yeah, I mean, there are some things that I think are a little bit better um, in the fact that you know where everything's going to be. Um, it's just that menu in the center. Oh, that's where I get to all of my apps. And then if I want to do any of my controls, it's, oh, I hit the controls button. But I mean, people are now missing direct access to things that they knew where they were before. Like the defrost buttons were always right there or the seat warmers were always right there. And now I know they made auto seat warmers, which are pretty great, by the way. Right. And, and, but that's the thing, though. If they had just said, hey, we're trying out this what we think is a really great feature, it's going to mean that those buttons disappear for a while, but try it out and see if you like it. I think a lot of people would have said, oh, yeah, I'll give that a shot, as opposed to, I got in my car this morning, I couldn't find my seat button, I'm, and now my butt's cold. Yeah. I mean, I think this system seems to really want 
you to use voice commands. Yeah. Um, and I basically, I don't generally use voice commands because I'm not used to it working. Well, and I don't use them because I think as a musician, um, I'm either listening to music mm. and I don't want to interrupt my song. Like my song is bopping and I don't want to be like, let me just talk for a second. And so I don't. Or I'm having conversation with someone in the car and I don't want to be like, hang on, let me talk to my car. Right. Norm- Shut up. <laughs> Normally you just, you know, hit a button while you continue talking. No, that's a good point. And, and I'm also just used to saying like, you know, Schmay Flugel and being like, I I, I tried my best. If it, if it turned on, I'm so sorry. Um, and being like, would you turn on the lights? And it goes like, what? I don't know what you are saying to me. I'm like, I set up those lights. <laughs> I set exactly what they're called in the app. What do you, What is hard about that? So I'm not, you know, voice commands to me, like, and they work really well in my car. It's just I'm not used to them working well anywhere else. My advice is that we all start learning and using voice commands for everyday things that we want to do in the car. Just try like one command out a day, mm-hmm. get used to it. And I think as we get used to just talking to our cars, a lot of these problems will go away because you won't have to get into submenus. So a lot of people um, were busy over the holidays. We completely understand. You might have missed last week's In Depth um, where we talked to a very exciting battery recycling company called Red of Ivis. It's called Battery Recycling is the Future. Here's why. So definitely go give that a watch if you haven't already. Yeah, there's also a way that you could possibly invest in the company. So on December 22nd, the autonomous driving company Too Simple did something historic. Yeah, Too Simple had one of their Class 8 semi-trucks outfitted with their autonomous driving hardware, sensors, and software drive without a driver on public roads from Tucson, Arizona to Phoenix, Arizona. That's about 80 miles on public streets and highways. To be clear, according to Too Simple, there was no driver in the cab of the truck and no remote intervention either. Now, this trip was at night with very little traffic. I want to just state that clearly in the beginning. This was not like driving through, you know, San Francisco during the day. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the footage. Now, I'm a little confused about why the software is doing this with the steering wheel at this point in the journey. Uh, You can see the truck is... uh, rocking back and forth quite a bit um and that kind of steering input which is i don't know to me unsettling takes over a minute for it to settle down yeah that's really weird and i haven't been able to figure out why that is and also as i was watching this 80 minute journey um there's this point here in the journey this has nothing to do with the truck uh this is more about just drivers in general why would you drive between two big rigs i mean why But it looks like it was a very straightforward route. There was really no traffic to be seen, no bad weather. Um, You know, they did this obviously late at night Mm -hmm. um, and they must have, you know, mapped out the route. So I don't know. There's going to be a lot of pushback from people saying this is about as easy as it gets. But I mean, it is exciting. It shows that it is real to a certain extent. I mean, there's no one in the car. I mean, autonomous driving in everyday life is just around the corner. There's many smart minds that are working on it. And that's what's exciting to me. Too Simple CEO Chung Lu said, by achieving this momentous technical milestone, we demonstrated the advanced capabilities of Too Simple's autonomous driving system and the commercial maturity of our testing process, prioritizing safety and collaboration every step of the way. This test reinforces what we believe is our unique position at the forefront of autonomous trucking, delivering advanced driving technology at commercial scale. So to be clear, this is the first time a Class 8 truck has been driven autonomously with no driver on board, no remote human control. Too Simple is a publicly traded company trading under the ticker symbol TSP on NASDAQ. And I want to talk about more about this on the Investor Club bonus story this week. If you want to check that out, head over and support us over on Patreon, because I think I figured out what the oscillation was about. And I'll explain my theory on the Investor Club bonus story. So the CPUC, or California's Public Utilities Commission, I like to call them the G-C-T-I-L-S-H-B-T-U-T-I-W-D-W-T-U-W. Uh, what is that? Stanford? That is the government commission that is lobbied so hard by the utilities that it will do whatever the utilities want. Okay. My name's probably not going to catch as much. You don't, you don't think that'll stick, huh? No. They just introduced a new proposal called NEM 3.0. Basically, it's a new net energy metering proposal that would reduce the benefits for people to go solar in California. NEM 3.0 would slash the credit that residential solar owners get paid for putting energy back on the grid to about four cents per kilowatt hour. Now, by the way, I did a little research. In Los Angeles right now, uh, LA households are paying about 24 cents per kilowatt hour. So they're supposed to get paid four cents for putting solar onto the grid while the utility gets paid 24 cents? What the 
Now, Tesla is fighting, and we all have to fight it too. So put down your Wii controller for a second and do at least one of the following things. Weigh in with CPUC by submitting a comment to the Public Advisor's Office. Sign up to provide a verbal comment directly to the five commissioners at the CPUC next public meeting on January 13th. Join the Solar Rights Alliance and find out all the ways you can act to protect rooftop solar in California. And join the Save Our Solar rally in San Francisco at the CPUC building and Los Angeles in Pershing Square on January 13th at 11 a.m. And if you're like, well, it's not going to affect me because I already have solar on my roof. Think again. This proposal will also affect existing homeowners with solar in California, people who installed their solar under NEM 1 and 2. You could have installed solar 15 years ago, and this new proposal will retroactively affect you. Not only is the rate going to drop, but NEM 3.0 would now require solar owners to pay a fee of $8 per kilowatt per month regardless of energy use. So if you have a 10 kilowatt system on your roof, you'd be required to pay $80 a month. Okay, wait, um, what's the like justification for that? This is because this is evil. I mean, I know it just seems like a bunch of numbers, but this is what evil looks like and we have to stop it. Because if we don't, then it won't just be California. It will spread to other states and countries. We have the fossil fuel industry on the ropes, people. They are dying and this is one of their last gasps to try and get back up. Don't let them up. Crush their f***ing windpipes and keep them on the mat to die a bloody f***ing death they deserve. Seriously, we have a lot of power. If we all do our part and reach out to CPUC, we can get them to make a more reasonable proposal. Like Tesla says, one that doesn't punish solar customers. Yeah, solar is the answer, you f***ing hypocritical money-grubbing asshole utilities. We're posting the link to the CPUC down below. Now, they tried to make it hard to submit a comment. If you go to their site, it looks easy, right? Doesn't it seem really easy? Just, great, just yeah. click on the thing. Okay. Well, well, I'll click, click on, on the thing. Okay. okay. So now it opens up this page where what? you get eight steps that you have to follow. And you might be like, well, Zach, it's just eight steps. Try following the first step that you have to put in a meeting number so that you can put in your comment. Well, I searched for 15 minutes to find the meeting number and it took me all my goddamn brain power to finally find it. So I did the work for you. Here is the meeting link. We'll put that down below. And here's the link to put your comment. This will save you about half an hour of frustration. So make sure you do it. Go down below. Make my half an hour of pulling my hair out worthwhile by going to that comment link. This will now only take you a second as opposed to before it would have been impossible and tell them how you feel. So as winter is now upon us here in the Northeast, I thought we should take a look at this. Whoa. What is that? That's the Moon Bike from French company Moon Bikes. All right, give me stats. Okay, so it's powered by a three kilowatt motor for speeds up to 26 miles an hour. It weighs 82 kilograms or 182 pounds, so I don't think you'll necessarily be throwing this in the back of an SUV. Mm -hmm. um, it has a 2.5 kilowatt hour battery pack for a claimed range of one hour or 12 miles, um, and that's in sport mode, and an hour and a half or 22 miles in eco mode. You can also get the five kilowatt hour battery pack if you want to double that range. All right, how much does it cost? Moonbike says they will be producing 400 in advance of the 2021-2022 winter season for the American and European markets, so I guess that means it's available now. Mm -hmm. uh, starting price is $8,500. Wow, okay, so this isn't your typical snowmobile uh, because usually the snowmobile has two skis in the front, which means that you right. don't have to do, well, it, it's fairly stable on its own you, you don't have to it's not a, like a bike you know and this is a right. lot more like a snow bike right and i mean snowmobiles can go much faster true and for uh, longer distances and stuff like that but this is going to be much quieter and this is going to be i think in some ways a lot more fun um, because you you can be you know going through the woods with your friends you could be going up the mountain you could be mm -hmm. going down the mountain yeah i mean uh, speaking of going up the mountain and stuff i feel like this would be great for ski resort places where it's like oh my chalet is a little bit too far to walk to mm -hmm. i'll take the moon bike mm. um i think it is for a pretty you know high-end clientele with those kind of prices yeah. but i think if they could get the price down to like two grand three grand that it could be a much more diverse group of people buying it and yeah. having fun with it what i love is that this is electric i mean you wouldn't want to do this with a gas powered motor because then it'd be like if you're both with your friends it'd be like what what was that where are we going next i'm saying we should go what? left it's where? Oh. 
So we reported a couple weeks ago about how New York City Council has approved the purchasing of 250 Tesla Model 3s as police vehicles. Well, on December 30th, New York City announced today the New York City Department of Citywide Administrative Services announced that it has placed an order for 184 all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E sport crossover utility vehicles for law enforcement and emergency response use. The new electric vehicles will replace gas-powered vehicles currently in the city fleet. The new all-electric crossovers will be received by the city by June 30th, 2022. This is part of New York's $420 million plan to drastically cut citywide climate emissions and advance carbon neutrality. The 420 plan, man. That's so <laughs> nice. cool. Good for New York. I mean, I don't want to sound like sour grapes that they didn't purchase Teslas. I'm sure they're going to love their new Mach-E's compared to their ICE cars that they're using now. Um, this shows how important, though, fleet sales divisions are. Ford has a fleet sales division that works with cities especially police and Tesla does not and they don't seem to care about having that and that's a damn shame and this is why we should be VPs of Tesla special operations because we would make this happen all right it's time for into the future sponsored by our friends at Henson shaving one of the things that I love about my Henson shaver is just how what a good shave it gives me like I just feel like it's so consistent. I don't have to be like, let me adjust my angle. It, it has this nice flat surface. So that way when I'm shaving it, I just have to apply pressure and it gives a great cut. Okay, shut time. up. I'm so jealous. I've never been jealous of shaving before. I've always been like, I don't have to shave. But now every week I'm just like, God, that looks like fun. Yeah, I've never seen you fully shaven in my memory. Never been. Because you just hate it so much. I hate it. But I now I feel like I might start shaving. <laughs> well, if you go to Henson Shaving and you use our code now, you know, you get 100 free blades when you purchase one of their shavers. So I mean, one of these days you might tune in and see me it. clean shaven. <laughs> Northvolt, the Swedish battery cell maker, which was started by two former Tesla employees, just produced its first battery cell last week. Here's where they produced it at their ET factory in northern Sweden, which we reported on when it was announced in 2017. Wow. Four years later, uh, the factory is being completed and the first cell is now made. Peter Carlson, Northvolt CEO, says that the factory will continue ramping up production this year and should have its first commercial deliveries later this year. They aim to reach 60 gigawatt hours of production per year. Okay, now doing a little back of the napkin math. Uh, um, that would be batteries for about 800,000 cars per year. Yeah, they currently have over $30 billion worth of orders from companies like VW, BMW, Volvo, and Polestar. But like 800,000 cars, that's not a lot of cars. I mean, that I mean that is a lot, but not really. Like, you know what I mean? No, I know what you mean. And I really want to get my hands on one of these first EVs that has the Northvolt battery chemistry so that we can test it out. Because it's all fine and good to talk about that you're making batteries, but are these like 2017 batteries or are these 2021 batteries? Like or are we, these 2024 batteries? <laughs> right. We don't know like what is the battery chemistry. All right. It's time for Going Green brought to you by EcoWare. Now, OK, you want to go for a drive and test out the latest version of FSD beta. But you know that the other drivers will be mad as heck. They might even try and rear end you during a whimsical hesitation. We've got the solution. That's right. Look at that. Please be patient. FSD beta tester or... You can't get mad. Self-driving car. Yeah. Don't be mad. Don't, Don't be, be mad, mad at me. It's, it's just car. my car. <laughs> car doesn't care if it gets hurt. Also, I do. we've got the organic uh, T-shirts, organic cotton, and I love this new design. Nice. Huh? And remember that we carbon offset the manufacturing, the shipping, and the life cycle of your product. We plant 10 trees for every order, and then we help cap a well. That's right. We plant 10 trees. You just need to buy a sticker, and we'll plant 10 trees. That's so right. even if you're not going to put it on your car, you can put it on your laptop or something. Uh... Ten yeah. trees. Think about it. Okay, for today's Going Green, I'm going to give you a number and you tell me what it means. Okay, ready? No. What? 98.6. Uh, 98.6. What am I supposed to do with that? Okay, here's a hint. Okay. 98.6%. Okay. It's almost 100%. Uh, is it your latest Tesla safety beta score? Think Scotland. Okay. Uh, 98.6% of Scotland wants to go green. That's close. Actually, Scotland back in 2011 set one of the most ambitious goals in the world, a goal of getting 100% of their electricity from clean energy in 2020. Did they do it? Almost. Data from 2020 shows that Scotland got 98.6% of their energy from renewable sources. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. 98.6% of 
all of Scotland's energy was renewable. And this is the point I want to make here. This shows that if you set ambitious goals, you can sometimes achieve those goals. The problem with most of the world is that we're like, you know, that's really hard. And if we set the goal, we might fail. So let's just not set the goal. And I mean, they set the goal. And, and then they, they pretty much made it. Wow. And it, this is the... Like, no one's walking around in Scotland right now going, Crap, if we only got a little bit harder, we could have done it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, good, hey, good for you, Scotland. Yeah. I mean, set ambitious goals and you, and you freaking hit them. Give yourself a pat on the back. All right, some for sunspots. One very important indicator of what is coming in the world of energy is called new power capacity. This measures what type of power plants are being built. It's a leading indicator for what our grids will be looking like going forward. So let's look at this chart of new power capacity in the U.S. from last January to last October, the latest data that we have. And this is from Clean Technica. This is in megawatts, and the data isn't from a bunch of hippies. It's from FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, you know, the agency in charge of new power plants. So get this. 86% of new U.S. power capacity was renewable. And I want to just take a look at wind growth for a second. And more specifically, let's take a look at Texas here. Texas was the state with the most wind turbine capacity, more than the next three highest states of Iowa, Oklahoma, and Kansas combined. 20% of Texas's electricity came from wind in 2021. But speaking of Iowa and Kansas... In both those states now, wind is number one for in-state electricity generation, beating coal. And according to the EIA, wind's share of electricity generation in the U.S. grew to 10% in 2021. And again, so when your friends are like, yeah, isn't your car powered by coal or something? Uh, no, it's not. And if you'd like to become part of the solution and get solar on your house, talk to our friends at Energy Pal. I know you have a lot of questions. I had a lot of questions when I wanted to go solar. They're there to help answer those questions and to find you the best deal. So reach out to them on the link below and tell them that Zach and Jesse sent you. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. Remember, if you've got a story you want to share with us, please send it in to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. What do we got this week? We've got Will at Fully Charged Live in the UK. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This Hi. is Will and Charlie from the UK. We're here exhibiting our Tesla at the uh, Fully Charged Live event in uh, Farnborough. And uh, guess what's here? It's the first ever Model Y in the UK. And that Model Y was provided by a chap called Oliver, who had driven it all the way from Germany to be with us at Fully Charged. So a special thanks to him for putting in that extra effort. And alongside all the Teslas were all of these car manufacturers that were providing their latest EV efforts to us, which was fantastic to see a huge amount of electric cars on display. We're exhibiting with those Teslas. That's our little white Model 3 there. And we're right next to the uh, tent where they're doing all the talks. Three years ago, we went to our first fully charged live event where we were fortunate enough to have a ride in a Tesla for the first time as part of the Tesla taxi shuttle service to the venue. So from that moment, we kind of knew we were going to get a Tesla. Thanks to uh, Now You Know as well, learning a bit more about the whole company. We thought we'd make the plunge and bought ourselves a Model 3 two years ago. And uh, it's been a bit of a bit of a goal and an ambition to get to fully charged and be a part of the Tesla Owners Club and persuade some more people to buy Teslas, which we think we did a good job of yesterday. As you can see, there's a whole heap of different cars and vehicles to see. Absolutely tons to do throughout the day as well. There's Loads of great catering, it's this gigantic giga theatre where they were doing talks all day. And then through this curtain, there was even more cars hiding away in this gigantic room. There's also many of these independent little companies that were working with green energy and renewables, as well as lots of uh, energy providers, and solar, thermal, heat pumps for your home, and even this crazy little three-wheeled thing that leans around corners. That's it for now. Now you know. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. We got a lot of cool stories. You got some kind of meme review? Yeah, we're going to be checking that out on Patreon bonus story. If you want to see it, you can head over to patreon.com slash now you know. Support us for as little as a buck a month. You get to see all of our Patreon bonus stories.
<laughs> well, we got deep there on the Patreon bonus stories. Yeah. We talk and, about the meaning of life. And we got to talk about some Investor Club bonus stories on our Investor Club bonus stories. All so, right. It's time for the Patreon shout outs. These are people that make this show possible. Who do we got this week? Kenneth Miller. Empros. Eric Yabar. Trevor and Alicia Smith. Daniel La Rochelle. James Weber. Ruben Finkel. Tobor Seven. David A. Miller. Richard Rayner. One Bad Dog and Bama Girl. Benjamin Chen. Why not? Timothy Bendel. Matthew Hilton. Alfredo Polo. Sean Marin. Emmett Glamas. Patrick Tremblay. Eo Gazer. Jose. Cameron McSpaden. Miki Muzi. And Samuel. Thank you so much for supporting us. We can't do this show without you. All right, it's time for Elon's Sweets of the Week. And Dima said, next year, Norway may completely abandon sales of cars with internal combustion engines, where electrified models have already occupied 95% of the market. Norway is an example for all countries. Elon says, as goes Norway, so goes the world. That said, still a long way to go to replace the fleet of combustion vehicles on the road. Niche Gamer said, a new Doom 2 mod has surfaced that lets you photograph dumb NFTs for money. World of Statistics said, orbital launches in 2021 by Rocket Family. Elon says, useful mass to orbit is what matters. So let's show a graph of that instead. And so, yes, in Q3, China, an entire country, is currently number one, followed by SpaceX. Hmm. Elon Musk said, so much of AI is about compressing reality to a small vector space like a video game in reverse. Physics formulas are the rendering rules. Hmm. Shibatochi Nakamoto said, I wonder if the guys running the reality simulator are amused to see us trying to make our own simulator. Elon says, now that the Webb telescope has been launched, they will have to spend more on rendering. Ha ha. Lex Friedman said, the more complex the entities and pockets of reality, the harder they are to compress. Intelligent life, consciousness, love. Elon says, yeah, the smarter someone is, the harder it is to simulate slash predict their behavior. Hmm. That's, I did not know that. Pranay said, physics is the law. Everything else is a recommendation. Elon said, people are able to break any laws made by humans, but none made by physics. World of Engineering said, term of the day, the Planck constant. Definition, the Planck constant is the quantum of electromagnetic action that relates a photon's energy to its frequency. The Planck constant multiplied by a photon's frequency is equal to a photon's energy. Elon said, the resolution of the universe is not smaller than Planck length. Hmm, is that true? Uh, Maybe. I, be I, th I believe so. Don't question Elon. That'll be on the test, by the way. High Vibration said, what resolution do our eyes see in? Elon says, about 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers. I wonder if you put 100 CEOs in a room, how many could answer that question? <laughs> Clean Technica said, wind and solar equals 86% of new U.S. power capacity in January through October. Elon said, most people still have no idea that sustainable energy generation is growing so fast. Chuck Cook says, enjoyed the Lex Friedman and Elon interview. Elon thinks full self-driving beta is going to be level four next year and moving from image processing to photon to vector space would require retraining. These changes are hard and will be similar to removing radar. Good in the long run, but change takes time. E-Spirit Tesla says, I guess photon equals raw image as opposed to processed image, meaning full self-driving beta 11 bypasses the full self-driving chips ISP, thus eliminating its latency. So that's the image signal processor. And Elon said, yes. And that's actually big news. Yeah. Uh, Serene said, when are we expecting the first orbital flight to happen next year, Elon? Is it still in January? And of course, this is about Starship. Um, Elon says, FAA approval is the scheduled driver. Their latest update says end of February. Hmm. So the government's slowing things down. Sawyer Merritt says, Elon on Tesla's autopilot team. Ashok is actually the head of autopilot engineering. Andre is director of AI. People often give me too much credit and give Andre too much credit. The Tesla autopilot AI team is extremely talented. Some of the smartest people in the world. Elon went on to say, Ashok was the first person recruited from my tweet saying that Tesla is starting an autopilot team. And of course, he's referring to Ashok Eliswamy, who's the director of AP software. He's been there at Tesla for eight years. Wow, good for him. And Elon said, wow, working on this problem has soaked up a lot of my time and brain cycles over the past seven years. This and Starship engines are currently the two hardest problems. Pranay quoted Elon in his tweet. He quoted, the reason I care about us becoming multi-planet species and spacefaring civilization is foundationally, I love humanity. So I wish to see it prosper, do great things and be happy. If I did not love humanity, I wouldn't have cared about these things. And Elon said, I do. Christopher Mim says there are 936 startups valued at more than $1 billion in the world today. What do we think this chart looks like in, say, five years? Elon said, if history is any guide, not many will make it past the next recession. Black Model 3 said, when do you think the next recession will be? Elon said, predicting macroeconomics is challenging, to say the least. My gut feeling is maybe around spring or summer 2022, but not later than 2023. Ooh. 
Christmas and said, this is a chart of how much money per hour a working age population person has to pay in taxes to keep the federal budget funded without increasing the deficit. That bump in 2008 is nothing compared to the bump in 2020. Whoa. Oh, wait. So (laughs) wait, hang on. So I have to be paying $21 an hour if I work 2000 hours a year. Just to pay the current federal and budget. And everyone who works would have to do And that's that. just to do it without increasing the deficit. Yeah, and that's why Elon said this chart is a big deal. Aaron Hoffman says, in 1993, the president was about 30 years older than me. In 2002, the president was about 30 years older than me. In 2018, the president was 30 years older than me. Today, the president is still 30 years older than me. Elon said, there is no way to be in touch with voters when you're three generations away from voting age. And Elon tweeted out this little meme. 2022, here we go. So we had a poll this week. Yes. Does the Rivian R1T deserve to win Motor Trend's Truck of the Year? What did people say? Most people said it would have been nice if more people got to drive home with mm-hmm. one before they got to win anything. Mm. Um, but most people were pretty positive that uh, an electric truck won. All right. It's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. And if you've got some stories or pictures you want to send in, send them on in to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. Haytham wrote to tell us, the team and I want to say hi from our Wings Hive Robotics Lab. We research, develop, and design autonomous, sustainable retail systems and infrastructures. We invented new robotics we call Hive Robotics, coming soon next year to the food service and cannabis market in 2022. We look forward every Tuesday and play it in the lab to Tesla Time News as we tirelessly work for a sustainable future. So, hello! Peter from Tesla Owners Australia shared that their Tesla Owners Club is selling Musk Vodka. It says proceeds from the sales will go directly to Uniting the Nation, a program to unite Western Australia with Eastern Australia by helping to install fast EV chargers where needed across the Nullarbor. Wow. Is this sanctioned by uh, the Musk himself? Uh, Joe spotted another R1T in Seattle, Washington. Again, the wrong coast. Then Jan sent us this photo of a white Model X. Oh, is that the new Plaid Model X? Nope. Okay, cool. I mean, I've seen Model Xs before. No, no. Uh, what makes this exciting is that Gian spotted this on the island of Mahe in the Seychelles in the middle of the Pacific Ocean while on vacation. They also spotted some Leafs and two Konas, but no superchargers or public chargers. Wow. I mean, with tiny islands like this, I mean, a big range take you around for a couple of days. Yeah. And then you just charge it up at home. Here's Carlos in front of an Arkimoto FUV in Houston, Texas. Carlos wanted to give a special shout out to Robert from Arkimoto for allowing him to go for a ride. Notice that Carlos is wearing the Starship t-shirt from EcoWare. Good job, Carlos. Now, remember Lex from the video contributor story last week? He was uh, the guy in Hawaii oh, who right. brought that charger out to his car. Here's his car. He just got it. Nice. And he wanted to show us his Model 3 standard range. He says it's the coolest car I've ever owned. Works great. My electric bill has increased by about $100 a month, but that's better than the $200 a month I was paying for liquefied brontosauruses. <laughs> Joyce sent us this Model Y with the blue to red warming stripes representing global temperature increase since 1850, which is the start of the Industrial Revolution. And it's now time for supercharger reviews, but let's start with a beautiful supercharger. And this one's beautiful because look, there's a double rainbow over wow. it. Wow. Uh, Nicole was charging her Model 3 in Pembroke Pines, Florida um, at the Whole Foods Plaza. And uh, yeah, if you look really carefully, you can see the second rainbow there. So pretty. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. All right, let's see what we got for Supercharger Reviews this week. Zach and Jesse, greetings from Ireland. I am in Bird Hill in Ireland. Bird Hill has a six bay Tesla supercharger, which if you count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anyway, I think they've got a few new ones being uh, commissioned, but they're not quite commissioned yet. Um, Here is my Tesla. It's a rental. It's my first experience with the Tesla. Uh, Tesla S, really impressed. It's a 2019 model, so the autopilot, a little bit rough, but not bad. Um, Bird Hill, it's on the M7 motorway. Right off it, you can see the signs of the M7 there. Uh, between Dublin and Limerick, about uh, 20, maybe 30 kilometers from Limerick, 170 kilometers from Dublin. Um, fabulous motorway. Big service center over here. Um, we've got uh, Burger King, Subway, Costa, one or two more um, uh, things there as well. Plenty of decent loos, um, all very good. Like I said, it's about a 30 second drive around two roundabouts back onto the motorway. So all the best from Bird Hill, Six bay, extending to eight bay, I think it is. Now you know. We are at the brand new Hope BC 12 stall supercharger version three. Uh, we have a Tesla community uh, out here uh, celebrating the grand opening. 
even though one stall is out of order right now, but, and uh, look at this view. I'm just going to do a panorama. This is gorgeous. We gotta come out here just for the sights. It's right here by an SO station, so you got convenient bathrooms and um, also um, coffee, snacks, sit down, restaurant. It's a great location. It is like literally right off the highway. It could not be easier to get here off the highway. Um, so this is a great location. Uh, just because of the beauty, I'm going to give it that extra point and give it a full 10 out of 10. Uh, and I'm going to go and uh, meet some of the community now. Come on down. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is Jeff in Japan at the Supercharger location in Daikanyama, Tokyo, Japan. This location has four stalls that are located in the parking lot of Daikanyama's tea site complex. Inside, you'll find this huge bookstore selling music CDs and records, movies, and a huge variety of books. On the second floor, there's a lounge that has a nice mixture of both modern and traditional Japanese design. In other parts of this complex, you'll find restaurants and cafes. The number of amenities here is very impressive. Unfortunately, so is the parking fee. The basic fee is 350 yen per 15 minutes. If you buy something here, you can park for up to four hours for free, depending on how much money you spend in the complex. Regardless of the convenience at this location with all of its amenities, I'll give it a 7 out of 10 because of its high parking charge. Now you know. Hey Zach and Jesse, hello from Eddie World in Yermo, California. Eddie World has an 18 stall uh, Tesla supercharger. I believe they're just, they might be version 2, I'm not sure. There's a red Model X. And there were two more white Model Ys, they just pulled out. But uh, uh, Eddie World is a candy store, and it's a big gas station. Uh, there are two Eddie Worlds in this part of the world, in the Mojave Desert. This one here in Yermo, California, where the Yermo U.S. Marine uh, Logistics uh, Base is. And another Eddie World, the older one, in... Beatty, Nevada. And if you have another car that's electric, there's charge points. There are three, both CCS and Chatabo chargers, and a level two charger from charge point. And that's all right here at Eddy World. I give this an eight out of 10 because it's an entertaining tourist trap extraordinaire. I hope you have fun if you're going here between Las Vegas and Los Angeles. Thank you so much for sending in those supercharger reviews. Again, head over to nowyouknowchannel.com and you can upload your own. Only place in the world for it. All right, what do we got for new superchargers? We got the eight stall in Doral, Florida. We got number 58 in Sweden, the 20 stall in Jönköping, Sweden. The eight stall in Orlando at Palm Parkway, Florida. Number 64 in Texas, the 12 stall in Austin on South Lamar Boulevard. The six stall in Taichung in Fengguang, Taiwan. The six stall in New Taipei at Sangchung, Taiwan. Number 40 in Taiwan is the 6th stall in Taipei at Shilin. There's the 6th stall in Chengdu, South Korea. The 8th stall in Jecheng, South Korea. The 8th stall in Yangyang, South Korea. And number 65 in South Korea is the 8th stall in Cheongnyeo, South Korea. There's the 4th stall, we don't know what speed it is, in Kobe at Mikaj, Japan. Number 42 in Japan is the 4th stall. Again, we don't know the power, but it's in Koryama, Japan. Number 80 in Florida is the 8th stall in Madison, Florida. And number 260 in California, number 1,253 in the U.S., number 3,221 in the world is the 16th stall in Martinez, California. Nice. Nice big number. All right, let's do the Patreon giveaways. Remember to get into this big barrel of fun that Jesse's putting up here. Join us on Patreon. The more you support us, the more chance you have to win. Uh, you're going to win a $30 gift card to EcoWare where you can get some cool merch. You can get some honey. Mm -hmm. You can get some mugs. And you can get those bumper stickers. And the winner is Rache. Rache, congratulations. Rach, Rach? I don't know how to pronounce, how to pronounce it, it but we'll get you your gift card. Don't you worry. Thank you for supporting us. And uh, maybe to the end of the show. 
Congratulations. Uh, we made it to the end of the show, too. And a new year. Welcome to the new year. We've been doing this for seven years. No. Do the, do the number. Do the math. Six years. 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. We're in our seventh year. In our seventh year. Come on! That's my grandpa tells me. <laughs> yeah, you're in your 17th year. Um, okay. And look at all these people going by, the names going by here, which support us. If you want to get your name on that list, join us for $5 a month or more on Patreon. Those people make a huge difference in making this show possible because the show ain't cheap. Right. I mean, let's be honest. Yep. We just talked for three hours. Uh, two hours of that was wrong, yep. so the editors have to cut that out. Yeah. And uh, then, then they, they have, have to jokes. actually put in jokes and make it funny and interesting for you to watch. They have to add all the quotes. They have to add all the pictures. They have to add all the video. They have to put it all together. Three people have to work on this show at one time so that we, they can get it out for from our perspective within about 24 hours. Right. Um, that is not free. That is not easy. Um, we have some of the best freaking editors in the mm-hmm. world um, who are able to put this together and get it out um, in a reasonable amount of time so that way the news is still fresh. Yeah. So thank you to all of our Patreon patrons. They are what makes this show possible because sometimes YouTube decides to not pay us any money. Not yep. any money, but it just it just like, oh, this month we're making half of last, last month. Right. And if we couldn't pay our editors, that would be the end of the show. It, or let's just not share the video. You know? Right. <laughs> it, it, it would just... Uh, we wouldn't be able to edit it. I mean, right. Zach and I can't edit it that, that fast. No. Like we, we or all at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you to our patrons for making this show possible. Um, week in, week out, you're the real heroes here. Um, we'll see you next week. Now, now you know. know.